Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and it might be time. Look at that. It's glowing. It's possibly dangerous. A health and safety hazard, absolutely. It may be time to return, or at least attempt to be Lord of the Arena. So what's happened? Well, the expansion for Hearthstone is coming out very soon, but in a pre-launch event, they've allowed you to use the Goblins vs. Gnomes expansion cards in the arena, which has resulted in some pretty wild stuff going on. So it's a great opportunity to take on the arena once again with some brand new cards. All right, what do we got here? A Warlock, a Paladin, a Druid. Well, historically, I've had my most success with the Paladin, so we're going to take the Paladin. Probably heard in the background there. They actually have a little battle cry now, which is kind of wonderful. All right, we have a new card here. So we have Defender of Argus, which is good. Divine Favor, which is sometimes good. And then Cobalt Guardian. Whenever you summon a mech, gain Divine Shield. What? Who gains Divine Shield? I assume the Guardian. Yes, it must be the Guardian that gains Divine Shield, not you as a character. I'm pretty sure a hero character could never do that. Now, I could see that being really useful in a mech deck. The problem is mech decks are going to be fairly similar to Murloc decks in the sense that the synergy required is going to be difficult to attain in an arena. There are a lot of mech cards, though. I think there are more mech cards than there are Murloc cards. I'm pretty sure of that. It's a weird stat line, isn't it? 6-3. I mean, that's potentially phenomenal if you can guarantee mechs on the board. If you can't, it's terrible because this is a 5-mana drop that can die to a 2-drop. And, of course, a myriad of very cheap spells. So I don't know if I should take that. I don't think so. That, that seems like a fairly bad thing to bring along. But for the sake of this video, we're going to prioritize the Goblins vs. Gnome cards because, let's be honest, that's what you want to see. So let's get it. I know it's not a good idea. Spellbreaker, Noble Sacrifice, Humility. We'll grab ourselves a Spellbreaker, a nice bit of silence, nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is a big pile of terrible. I suppose I get the Blessing of Might. Also not brilliant. It's going to be the Bowl of Fist Ogre here, I think. Hopefully we actually get some mech cards. Ah, interesting. So these are both new cards. Ship's Cannon, whenever you summon a pirate, deal two damage to a random enemy. I'm looking forward to that in particular, because they've added some new pirate cards into the game, which means the pirate deck might be viable. And the Puddle Stomper Murloc, which is a straight up 3-2 for two. So it's a slight upgrade over the Murloc Raider. And then Holy Light. I mean, they're all kind of bad, really. Ship's Cannon... Ah, I... I mean... <sighs> They're all kind of bad. <laughs> There's no other way around it. I think we'll just take this straight up 3-2 Murloc. Okay. Another Murloc Raider. Should have taken that. Venture Mercenary is clearly the option to go with here, I think. Ah, some new cards. Okay, so Goblin Sapper has plus four attack while your opponent has six or more cards in hand. It's a oddly specific. The stat line's not too bad, though. A 2-4 for three is not too shabby. It trades nicely with those 3-2s and stays alive, which I like a lot. If you can get this out in the early game, this can be really powerful. And then the Bomb Lobber, deal 4 damage to a random enemy minion. 3-3 three, three for 5 otherwise, though, so debatable on that one. You could argue that it's a little bit of a better Mad Bomber, but stat-wise, it only gains 1 upgrade on the stat line. It costs 3 more, but it's guaranteed 4 damage to an enemy minion. So this could be, in some situations, considered a deadly shot. Depends what kind of board you're up against. It's not bad. They're both reasonable. I think we're gonna go with the Goblin Sapper. Like that for the early game there. Okay, Avenge, Iron Fur, Grizzly, and Stone Tusk Boar. Well, none of them are really all that good. I guess we'll grab Avenge. Another Avenge, Tinkertown Technician and Abusive Sergeant. Well, we have our Cobalt Guardian here, but we are severely lacking in mechs up to this point. This is why these cards are a bit of a problem in Arena, because Tinkertown Technician is potentially amazing. If you've got a mech, this is a 4-4 four, four for 3, and you get a spare part. A spare part is a card from a random little sideboard set that gives you a little benefit. I believe they all cost one mana. There's nice little things like return a minion to your hand, or freeze a target minion, or give plus one attack, or give divine shield, or give taunt. It's actually pretty cool. I like the spare parts mechanic that they've added in this expansion a lot. So this is potentially good. It's still okay anyway. I, even if you don't play the battle cry, that's still a three for three. For three. That's a pretty average stat line. It's, I'd say better than what the other things here. So we'll grab it and hope to actually get some mechs. Oh, hello, Madder Bomber. We're going to have to grab that one, aren't you? Look at that. It's a 5-4. It deals 6 damage. Yeah, randomly. It's insane. We're going to have to take that. This is, I think, mostly a comedy run. We're grabbing a bunch of new cards because they're funny. All right, Acolyte of Paint, Avenge again. They really seem to love that one. And Burly Rockjaw Trog. I do like this one quite a lot. 3-5 for 4 is 
not incredible, especially when you consider you can get a 3-5 for 4 with Taunt in the form of the Senjin Shieldmaster. But I like the idea that by playing this card on the board, you're affecting the decisions of your opponent, maybe not to actually use spells. And of course, if one spell gets cast, that includes the coin, by the way, then this becomes a 5-5 for 4, which is amazing. Okay. Nope, nope, and better. So, easy answer. There's one of the new pirates, the Salty Dog, 7-4 straight up stat line for 5. Very aggressive card, but obviously trading can be a problem with this thing. A lot of these big stat lines, like say the Molten, whatever the hell it is, that Molten Doggy, the 9-5, Corehound, that's the one. Things that people don't really like to play. The pirate synergy is potentially interesting. Dancing Swords, I do like that. And Puddle Stomper, I'll go with the Dancing Swords, I think. There we go. Okay, here's a new one. Antique Heal Bot. 3-3 three, three for 5. Restore 8 health to your hero. It's a mech, which is why this... Uh, usually I take the Dark Iron Dwarf here, but this is a mech, and we're looking for a little bit of mech synergy. So we're going to grab that. Yes, I know. You're telling me this is an ineffective and ineffectual and inefficient draft that is reliant far too much on luck. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm doing it anyway because it's fun. Chillwind Yeti. Nice rock solid. Nothing wrong with that. Here's a new one. Gilblin Stalker. 2-3 Stealth for two. It's, I mean, that's good. 2-3 a for two is good. 2-3 Stealth for two is great. Other Ring Farseer is obviously pretty good too, but we're going to take that because it's new. No more gun infantry. You see, th this is one I'm really not convinced by. 1-4 Charge and Taunt is a little bit of a weird stat line. You can play it in some scenarios where something has like one health left and you can knock it off and then it becomes basically a chump block the next turn. I can see that being potentially useful, but outside of that, it's the stat line and the combination of stats is a little bit weird. Hmm, I think we'll, get, we'll actually take an Abusive Sergeant here as opposed to that. Okay, Redemption Harvest Golem, Lost Tall Strider. Again, a new one. It's very straight up. 5-4 Beast for 4. I still prefer the Yeti. I think that's a better stat line. We're going to take the Harvest Golem. Okay, still looking for mechs, so we're not getting them. But thankfully, a Harvest Golem does count as a mech, so we're going to grab another one. Ah, hello. Nothing new here, but we've got a Baron Geddon, a Kel'Thuzad, and a Captain Greenskin. I think that's going to be the Kel'Thuzad. It's probably the best option here. There we go. Blessing of Might, and then Ring Farseer, Razor Fen Hunt. It's going to be the Farseer. Okay, what are we looking at? Hmm. We're okay in the early game. This is not too terrible. We've got some nice stuff at the end as well, as long as we can last that long. Novice Engineer could definitely use a little bit of draw. It's certainly not the best draw in the game, but hey, we don't have any yet, so... True Silver Champion, obvious choice here. Ah, ooh, what is this? This is a new weapon. Give a random friendly minion Divine Shield and Taunt. That's a battle cry. And you get three swings with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Avenging Wrath is good as well, but Cog Hammer, yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Another, do we want to take two Venturecos? All right. Get a little bit heavy on the fives here. Here's a new one. Restore four health to your hero and gain plus two attack this turn. Interesting. That's not too shabby. That's like a slightly different version of Claw for the Druid. Except instead of armor, it actually heals you. Not amazing for the... I don't know. Half of it is. I mean, for a little bit of early game squabbling, I suppose it's not too bad. Although, of course, I do like armor more than health. Because if you start at 30, this is not going to heal you. And then you're going to end up taking damage anyway. If it was the other way around, say it healed you after you attacked, it would be great. Mm, I don't know about that one. I'm going to take a Haunted Creeper. Shielded Minibot. Well, okay. 2-2 two, two for 2. Divine Shield. And it's a mech. So it gets a little bit of synergy there. Yeah. Send your Shield Master. Obvious choice. Bad Bomber. Probably. And last but by no means least, probably a Mind Control tech. Wailing Soul is not helpful to me at all. And Blood Sail Corsair is just not very good. So here we go. Hmm. Nice little scroll that it does right there. So, I don't know about this Cobalt Guardian this time around. I don't know if we have enough mechs to make it work, but maybe, maybe, just maybe we can. At least we've got a couple of Harvest Golems. We have the Shielded Mini Bot in there as well. So, we have a, a few things we can use it with. Huh. Alright, well, we'll see how it goes. Not a brilliant draft, but hey, we're playing it for laughs this time around. We'll see how far it goes. All right, here we go. Finds ourselves a warlock. I will fight with honor. Hmm. Probably want to toss the mind control text, toss the spell breaker, just keep everything. And by everything, I mean nothing. <laughs> Hold on to the truck. That was a really bad draw. Ugh. 
Okay, that's not gonna help me at all. Here's hoping we get something off the top of the deck. Hmm. I'm not keen on playing it, I'm gonna be honest. Not on its own. Can maybe use it with uh, reinforce in order to get a better trade. Makes more sense as far as I'm concerned. Hold on to the coin for something a little bit later. There's our antique heal bot. Alright, so we'll just play a reinforce. And we'll see what he plays. Because with the abusive sergeant, we can potentially trade this up for something with three health, which would be kind of wonderful. Let's see what he's got. Oh, he's gonna mortal coil it. Alright, well. I suppose that's a thing. He's drawn a lot of cards here. I wonder if he's got a Twilight Drake sitting in his hand somewhere. He might. He might. Let's throw out our Burly Rockjaw Trog. There we go. That may perhaps convince him to be a little bit less spell heavy, but does he have the Twilight Drake? That's the biggest question. Because if he does, that is going to be a problem. It's going to be hard to get through that. Got my Kobold Guardian sitting there, which is unfortunately not really going to help too much. That thing looks like it's from a Disney Pixar movie. Come on, if you had the Twilight, you played it. Ah, he throws out Corruption. Alright. I mean, I'm okay with that. It will kill us, but I do get to hit him in the face for five, which is kind of lovely. I mean, I can hit him even harder, really, if I want to. We can just buff this thing up with the Abusive Sergeant and go for the throat. Or we can just play the Chillwind Yeti, which I think is a better play in general. There we go. Taking out 19 health, that explodes. Okay, such is the way of it. But I have a 4-5 on the board, which is lovely. I could put out the Venture Co Mercenary next turn if I liked, although that would limit what I could play otherwise. We'll see. I think it's a pretty strong start. I mean, he's down 11 health already and he hasn't really actually done anything, so... It's hard to really complain about that result. Now this thing, you've got to watch out. I'm actually very surprised he's playing that right now. This is very, very powerful. I've run into this in Arena before. Essentially, if you can play this and then life tap, then suddenly that's a 6-6 six, six for 5, which is a bargain. If this stays on the board, it's terrible. But I can just kill it. So I really don't know why he played that. I'm fine with it. Sure. And now I'm going to play the Cobalt Guardian because I have in my hand an antique heal bot, which is amazing. Well, it's actually not amazing because I haven't taken any damage, but I've got a lot of damage on the board. So let's see if we can get rid of it. Probably can. That's the real problem with this thing. I think if you were to use it, you probably want to throw in some some little mechs. Just something that's a little bit easier to play on top of it. And don't play it solo. Don't play it naked because it's so vulnerable without its Divine Shield. The idea that it can regain Divine Shield multiple times is potentially hilarious, especially if you happen to have something like a Blood Knight available to exploit that. But can he kill it? Does he have the means? He's probably got another Mortal Coil or something. One shot. He has an Elven Archer. All right. Well, there you go. That's the reason not to play that on the board like that then, as we have just discovered. We live and learn. Especially when I had a Harvest Golem, there's really no need to do that. Pretty silly. Goblin Sapper. This is an ideal thing to play right now. He's got a lot of stuff. And we can probably put out our Harvest Golem as well. Why not? Well, let's see if you can... He's got to toss away quite a few cards to make that less effective. That's an ideal anti-warlock card to play. Although, as if you're playing a zoo warlock, I suppose it's not. Because you're going to be dumping your hand pretty hard. But, yeah. That's not bad. Very situational. But still, 2-4 for 3, even in... Even that's not bad, so... I'm a bit concerned about that thing. We have Abusive Sergeant, though, so this isn't actually that bad at all. We can bomb our way through there without too much of a problem. Just trade that into that, and then hit him in the face, and everyone is a winner. Matter Bomber! Hey, hey, hey! That might be a way to clear this out. Or po possibly kill my entire board. That's... These are all things that could happen. <laughs> Who knows? It's a mystery. There we go, get rid of that, lovely. There's the explosion. I think we're gonna hit him in the... Do I wanna hit him in the face and then throw out the Madder Bomber? I think that the Mad Bomber is a better idea than the Madder Bomber in this situation. It's less likely to kill my guy. There you go, look at that. He's a loyal bomber. We'll hold on to him for later. Seems like a good idea. All right, well. He might be able to dump his hand and weaken my Goblin Sapper. If he doesn't, he's in a lot of trouble next turn. 
Mada Bomber could potentially finish him off, but it's also more likely just to kill my stuff. All right, he's got Stormpike Commando. Okay. All right, all right. I don't hate that too much. Taking some damage, so I can consider this. Ooh, discards another succubus. All right. Mada Bomber might be good here. Thinking about it. Kelthazad's pretty good too, of course. I can trade all my stuff in and then just bring it back. Yeah. Let's do that. There we go. And might as well do some damage with that. It's going to be coming back in a minute anyway. Lovely. Welcome back. You were missed. That should do the trick. Now, can he get rid of Kelthazad? He's a bit of a difficult bastard to dislodge. And then, of course, we can use Madder Bomber, which will probably kill half my stuff, but then it'll come back. It'll be lovely. What do you have? A Dread Infernal. Those aren't very nice. We don't like those, but it doesn't really matter, because Kel'Thuzad's not going to die. At the end of each turn, summon all friendly minions that died. Hi! <laughs> We're back! <laughs> he just gives up. <laughs> I don't blame him. Oh, my. Well, that, that started off fairly well. We learned some lessons about how not to play the Cobalt Guardian, so there's something to bear in mind. That has got to be infuriating. I have a certain degree of sympathy. Although, playing that Watcher the way that he did, I'm not too keen on that idea. That's just such a good card, because you have the ability to self-damage for two as a Warlock. So really, you should just hold on to it until you can actually tap. Because that thing is just crazy, potentially. I, will fight with honor. I had one of those in a previous arena run, it did really well for me. There's just not that many circumstances where it's bad. Except that one. Alright, well, we've got some early stuff, that's always nice. We've got a Puddle Stomper, we've got a Gilbin Stalker. Or Gil- Gil- It's not a Gilbin, it's Gilblin. I always- I got this wrong when Cataclysm came out as well. Never get that right. Alright, ooh, True Silver Champion. No one ever complains about drawing a True Silver Champion. Oh, and this is the new board, by the way. It's pretty neat. You can do some cool stuff with it. Like this, for instance. You can actually move this laser around. I can even shoot him in the face with it. Doesn't actually do anything, but hey. Launch all sorts of rockets and things all over the place. If you open this for too long, then things ignite. Which is nice. Sometimes. There you go. Look at that. That's going to be off there. We can also use our wonderful teleporter here. All right. So, we're not going to be casting any spells anytime soon. I think we'll just throw out our puddle stomper. That's what we like to see. We summoned the kite, inexplicably. There we go. It's a fun little board. Frostbolt it will be. All right. I'm not too worried about that. Other ring Farsia is probably the way to go here. Eh, actually, it's... I don't know, it, it sort of is, and then it sort of isn't. Yeah, I mean, it's- if he's- He has to tr- I mean, he doesn't have to trade, but... Chance of having another Frostbolt fairly low. If he ends up having to use his hero power, that means he's only got a one mana play. So, that's alright. It's not too bad. Gets me a little bit of health back, too. I'm okay with it. Let's see if he has an answer. He might. And if he had- What is that? Lil Exorcist. Taunt, battle cry, gain plus one, plus one for each enemy death rattle minion. Huh. There's an actual counter to death rattle decks now. Very intriguing. I mean, it's gonna die, but hey, it's kind of cool, isn't it? Hmm. Avenge might be a decent enough play here. With the Gilblin Stalker. Alternatively, I can bring out the true silver champion. Not sure which is the better idea. Chillwind Yeti is always nice. Nothing really to complain about there either. Seems like a good opportunity to use Avenge. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, we'll try it. We'll, we'll go with that. I like it because... Oh, yeah, of course I buffed that. Got to be a little bit careful. I like that. It's going to buff it, and that keeps it in stealth as well, so it's nice and safe. So, we'll see what he decides to play now that I have this 5-5 five, five stealth creature. Just hopefully going to trade out pretty well. Alright, Fen Creeper. That's a nice card to have in this situation, especially when I've got this strong guy behind me. So there we go. That's a two for one there. And then we can just keep beating on him. I like it. 
little bit behind on the cards, but my board's better than his, so... Let's see what kind of magey nonsense he can pull out. You know, one thing that's kind of interesting is that, thanks to the larger card pool, it's now less likely that a mage is going to have a billion flame strikes. There's a lot more common cards in the pool. I'd say, I mean, there's actually no doubt that it makes Arena certainly more random and less reliable. Ah, he has a polymorph. Oh well. That's still going to be two into the one. I'm okay with that. It's not the worst thing to ever happen, is it? Play our Yeti out. There we go. And of course, we have an angry sheep that is willing to bring justice to the land. And then we're sitting on things like Antique Healbot, True Silver Champion. Eh. True Silver Champion is a nice answer to that. Admittedly, we're going to lose our two little weenies here, but that's going to happen anyway. We could play the Cog Hammer to potentially save one of them, but that seems kind of silly, frankly. So I think we're just going to play out the True Silver Champion. Yeah, we lose our 1-1s. It happens. You deal with it and move on in life. It's just one of those little trials. There we go. Incidentally, you can't move this thing, by the way. If you're infuriated by it, tough. It's there and it's not going anywhere. That is just the way of it. Of course he has more spells. You know what I was saying earlier? It's like, yeah, they have less chance of having spells. Oh, no. <laughs> Apparently not when you're a mage. You've got all the right answers, as always. Is there ever a situation where that is not the case? Okay. Hmm. Well, as usual, there is never an actual answer to a water elemental. No. No. But he's probably out of things like polymorphs and things like that now, right? Yeah, I mean... All right, we can get our 1-1 back. Well, that'd be lovely. Look at that. Look at that value. Extreme. And we do have our antique heal bot here just to get that health back. Let's see how much more removal he's got. Does he have another bloody polymorph? Does he have a fireball? If not, things are going to get very... Uh, of course he has another polymorph. Of course he does. <laughs> Why did I expect anything else? What is this thing? Okay, 2-3. Freeze any character damaged by this minion. Hmm. Well, that's slightly annoying. All right, well, first things first. We're getting rid of that. Thank you very much. You see, this would have been much more useful earlier when he was casting 5,001 spells. But it is what it is. Okay, I think we just play our antique heal bot here. Get me some health back and then throw down the burly rock jaw trog. See, I got all my mechs here and no sign of my cobalt guardian. Oh well. He'll eventually get rid of that. Cog hammer could be useful here. I think that's probably coming out, and then we can start taking swings at this stuff. Spellbreaker. Not all that useful. Give a random friendly minion divine shield and taunt. I suppose it's going to be that, isn't it? There we go. That's lovely. That is now a slightly very slightly weaker version of the Sunwalker. I have no complaints there. They can ping that off, of course, but that's always going to be the way. All right, well, my board's better than his now. I'm a couple of cards behind, though. I do still have this weapon in hand, which is always lovely. It's a nice little weapon. It's hard to complain about that. It's a slightly more expensive Stormforged Axe without the overload and with a benefit. I'd take that. Please don't hit the shield. Lovely. This is... Well, that backfired in a major way for him, in my opinion. That now gives that the ability to kill that. Of course, he can knock the shield off it, but simultaneously, he's going to have to lose that unless he has yet another spell in his hand. And since that seems to be all he has, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. I mean, heck, if I can get another swing out of this guy, then I'm happy with myself. He can die next turn to a fire blast. I don't care. Yeah, there you go. That's some value right there. Unless he has Matter Bomber. Oh, he's got a Flame Strike. Of course he does, yeah. Of course he has another spell, obviously. <laughs> Is anyone in any way surprised by this? No. You know, I'm half tempted to play the Spellbreaker out and just Silence Bone Dancing Swords here. Yeah. It's cool and fancy, and he can't possibly have another Flame Strike, right? Couldn't have another spell. Now, how many has he cast this game so far? I think pretty much. Almost everything in his deck has been a spell. There's no way he has another Flame Strike. Come on. No. No, he doesn't. Thank God. There we go. 
thankfully, finally, we actually get a break from this bloody mage. This is lovely. Well, at least we can kill off that without too much of a problem. Hello, Kobold Guardian, you're about three turns too late. But never mind. We can have a swing of that. That can go away. That's what we like. We're not playing that. That's kind of silly. I think we just go for the face at this point. I just, I don't really want to try. Actually, do I? Yeah. Get it on the board. We're trying to kill him. Get it on the board. And hope he doesn't top deck a flame strike. Come on, did you top deck my misery? Did you reinforce my eternal hatred of mages? Apparently not. Well, that's GG. Cool. Yes, I do. Played a little bit more aggro than I would have thought, but hey, it did the job. Hey, gold! We're going to need a lot of that for the Goblins vs. Gnomes expansion. They, uh, someone did the mathematics on this and claimed about 240 packs or so on average to actually get the full Goblins and Gnomes set. So yeah, it's, it's a little pricey. And that is including things like average disenchants and so on and so forth. So yes, uh, get your wallets ready or get ready to collect, whichever you prefer. I'll be grabbing the whole set once it goes out, for obvious reasons, because, hey, we we do the game on this channel. Oh, the shielded minibot. Again, I could have used you many times already. That's a that's a nice little piece of card art, actually. I like that. Look at that. That's awesome. He doesn't... He's not afraid of anything, is he? Absolutely not. It's what we like to see. A little bit of gumption. All right. Another Warlock. I had terrible luck with my Warlock draft. I actually went 0-3 with it. Although, I looked at some of the cards and it looks like playing a Demonologist is now significantly... potentially more effective. I'm, I don't want to play the Shield of Minibot because of the Mad Bomber. Simultaneously, I could just play the other Ring Farsi the turn after that. It, I don't have to play the Mad Bomber. So we'll go with it. But no, the it's got a couple of nice things. It's got Felheart, which is a big buffed up version. Hello. Huh. That's fine by me, I suppose. Oh, hello. Fun. Yeah, there we go. Just giving me shield back. That's what I like to see. Look at that. Look at that. Don't even have to break the shield because I can hit it in the face instead. Lovely. Fantastic. Yeah, they've got Felheart, which is a buffed up version of Demon Fire. So it's 5 damage or 5-5 five, five to a demon, which is pretty great. They have the Watcher, which is a really good demon. And they have this other minion, uh, Mistress of Pain, I think it's called. Which is a 1-4, but it heals you for all the damage it does. So you could buff that thing up and it's healing you. And the synergy with your hero power and obviously the synergy with the... With the Watcher as well. You got one healing and the other one's buffing itself based on the damage that's being done. So it seems like there's a lot more good demons now. And then you toss a Void Caller in there and suddenly things get very interesting. Mal isn't it Malganus is also available as well? I think that's a... if I recall correctly. So yeah, the Demonology deck seems like it might be vi viable now. You just toss out things like the... well, the bad minions. Like the Felguard and you get rid of the Succubus as well. Alright, well... Mad Bomber is potentially great, but potentially awful. As always. Go on, Mad Bomber. Or in this case, it was neither of those things. We got the Ancient Heal Bot. I can afford it. I'm okay with that. There we go. Can play that out next turn. Get my health back and everything will be just cheery. I'm very much looking forward to this expansion coming out in full. I've got all sorts of cool ideas. I've been wanting to play the full pirate deck. I can now do it. It seems like a full Wind Fury deck would now be viable. It seems like a full Stealth deck would now be viable. And, of course, reworking Demonology, reworking Randwin Rin, reworking the deck of Legends, because there's a bunch of new really interesting legendaries to play around with. Like, classes now have more than one legendary, which really changes the potential choices and ways that you could play that deck. It's all sorts of great gimmicks. Looking forward to it. I think we're going to silence him and make him cry. Indeed it shall not. And the loveliest of trades. Can't argue with that one, can we? Absolutely not. It's exciting. I know some people have been complaining about the random nature of things. Yeah, I, c I can see why. Some of the cards could be very, very annoying. Arena is obviously a lot more difficult just because everything's up in the air and it's really hard to know what to draft and... 
because you have more cards in the pool, the draft is less reliable, but simultaneously, it's a lot of fun. You're encountering all sorts of new things. And let come on, let's let's just call it what it is. This game was damn stagnant. It really was. Are we gonna have someone play another watcher? Oh, that's a cool piece of synergy that I didn't think of. Look at that. Yeah, it synergizes with Flame Imp, of course it does. It synergizes with Pit Lord as well. Interesting. Annoying? But interesting. All right, well, we're going to have to... I don't think... Yeah, that doesn't seem to be a better way of eliminating that other than trading some minions into it. Yeah. I'm going to have to trade stuff into it. There's no way around that. It's good. It is it is a good card. Absolutely. Well... Ancient Healbot's a bit slow here, but since the board is clear, it's probably about the time to play it, because later on I'm going to need some better minions out. So I'd rather get this thing out now. And get that heal back up instead of concerning myself with playing it later. Because a 5 mana 3-3, three, three, that's going to limit me from playing some of my really cool stuff, so I'd rather not. It's like, play it now while the board is clear and while I don't have to worry too much. I like it. Alright, life tap, cool. So we didn't have any six mana creatures to drop. That's always good news. Alright, well that's not gonna help too much at the moment. Soulfire coming out to blast that. Oh, he loses other watcher. That has got a sting. Ouch. That is painful. Well, that trades into that no problem at all, so we might as well just play a couple of good minions. There we go. Nothing wrong with that. Sweet. And he's down to 12 health as well, so this is all looking pretty good. He lost a very, very good minion in that one. As you can probably notice, I've been thinking, hang on a minute, Soulfire didn't used to cost anything. Yeah, they actually nerfed it. Basically, I mean, that nerfs a lot of Warlock Zoo stuff, a lot of Rush stuff. They nerfed Gadgeton Auctioneer as well. Okay. Best way to handle the Dread Infernal in this situation is not to handle the Dread Infernal in this situation. It's to go full on to the face and to try and kill him. That simple. Don't tangle with the Dread Infernal, there's no need. We have a taunt down, we're in a pretty good spot. And Warlock board clear is not exactly known to be amazing. So, we should win here. And goodbye, Kezan Mystic. Goodbye, Warlock. GG. Huh. Well, this draft wasn't quite as bad as I anticipated. Could have been a lot worse. How much further will this thing go? Will the standard Paladin luck win the day? I have no Consecrates. I have only one true Silver Champion. Is it enough? We'll see. I'm just hoping for a situation where that Cobalt Guardian might actually be useful. But, I, I think in general, if you're playing seriously in an arena rather than what we're doing now, which is just kind of messing around with new cards, Cobalt Guardian is a pretty bad pick, I think. I, unless you get it towards the end and you've already got a bunch of really good mechs just because they happen to be good picks at the time. No, I mean, if you see Cobalt Guardian early, I would say you, you just don't pick it. It's, it's just too unreliable. The stat line on it is terrible. So unless you're able to reliably pl play mechs to give it a shield, it's not worth it. But I can absolutely see its use in a constructed deck. Looking forward to potentially playing with that. Okay, so he's got six cards. The Goblin Sapper's probably not going to be that useful. Hello, Cobalt Guardian. You, you heard me talking about you, didn't you? Well, we might actually be able to use you this time around, so, you know. Well, there's no point in giving that the Divine Shield. We could play the Sapper. It depends if he can dump two cards. Maybe he can't. He has a coin, doesn't he, actually? So that was actually a really bad play. He should be able to dump that very easily. Yep, that was dumb. Shouldn't have done that. He'll probably be able to coin and then throw a card down pretty much immediately to neuter the sapper. Shouldn't have played it. Should have played Harvest Golem would have potentially been a better play there. Earthen Ring Farseer would have been okay. Dancing Swords would have been okay. Yeah. So that's bad. I don't know, we might get lucky. Maybe he doesn't have something he can play. It seems unlikely, though. Seal of Light. Okay. Well. 
That was a unexpected way of handling it. It's going to put Blessing of Wisdom on that. Well, that's kind of pointless because I'm not going to attack with a 1-1. One, one. I don't care about him, so... All right, well, that played out better than expected. we we'll throw down our Dancing Swords here, and of course, we're just not going to attack with Novice Engineer because that would be silly. Why give him more cards? It's one damage. It's not worth it. Okay, Nullifier. That's a nice one. 2-5, as you can see. Taunt, can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Good stat line. I suppose the answer is, well, the question is, do you think the one less health, one less attack, in fact, is worth the, the lack of being able to target it with spells or hero powers? Potentially. Hmm, what do we do here? Blessing a Might on the 4-4. Four -four. Bust it down, maybe? Certainly wouldn't want to... Oh, I mean, I could kill off the no Novice Engineer. But it gives him a card. I don't see the point. This thing doesn't have a lot of attacks, so... Coghammer might be good. I'm thinking about it. 50-50. Even that, given that a taunt would be good, because that kind of forces him to kill it. So I don't have to deal with it. So let's give it a shot. All right. Yeah, why not? That's not the worst thing to have ever happen to anyone. So we'll take one swing at the face and then keep the rest of it for later. So that's now sitting there as a jump block. I want to have a 7-2. That's not bad. So we've... Managed to turn our disadvantage into an advantage. At least until he consecrated the damn thing, but hey. It's still there, being annoying. And now it can be useful without having to attack, so hey. Oh! Ugh, that's just not very nice, is it? No, no, no. Okay, so we have that Cobalt Guardian. Which we're not going to use... yet. It's just too much of a risk to play it. Like, Hammer of Wrath would kill it off very quickly. You want to hold on to this until later. I think we just have to play that. Probably throw down the Puddle, puddle Stomper as well. Why not? Thinking of putting the Avenge out. I mean, that's going to die. So, Avenge is pretty good here. That works. And that's going to do a significant job of buffing up any of those creatures. To be a little bit scary. Unless, of course, they all die. Which, they... Won't? Will? Yes. Because that's 3-2. So now we just trace it into that. Well, at least I spitefully prevented... Hello. Spitefully prevented him from getting... There we go. Shields are up on both. There we go. At least I spitefully prevented him from getting any cards from his Blessing of Wisdom. And now we've got these mechs. Problem is, he's probably got a way of just killing that now. We're talking about the Hammer of Wrath earlier. It's just that 6-3. It's, it's so low. There you go. <laughs> it's so low, and the Divine Shield could be popped so easily. I'm not convinced by that card. I'm going to be honest. Well, that was that. And that's now going to be slowly lurking in the background there. And we are very short on cards. I don't have much draw either in this deck. Ugh. Yeah, this is not brilliant. I'm not looking forward to having to fight that. True Silver Champion is always nice. I don't really want to take six to the face, but I may not have a choice in the matter. It's going to be that, 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 probably. Well, at least it's going to heal me for two, so it's really I'm just taking four to the face. And then we just whack that in there, trade that into there, play this out. There we go. Might as well just tackle that. Actually, that was dumb. No, no, it wasn't dumb. It was going to die anyway, if you wanted to make that trade. I was going to buff up to 4-4. Four, four. If I'd left that alive, he would have just gone for it. But you could maybe argue that I wasted a damage or two that could have been thrown at him. Well, looks like he's going to do that instead. All right. Okay, then. Oh, and he's healing it. Ugh. Well, at least we can kill it with a true silver champion. Anti heal bot. Handy in this situation. And then we can get rid of that. So that's not too bad, but I mean, we're top decking at this point, so it's not a brilliant situation for me at all. If we get something that would buff up all this, that would be nice, but I don't really have anything in my deck that would. 
Uh, we're not out of it yet, but I have a hand of zero. He has hand of four. Interesting use of that. Okay. Suppose it forces some dodgy trades. Could be an avenge. Probably an avenge. I wouldn't throw down a noble sacrifice in this situation. Not with these little guys. It's probably an avenge. Mm, I do have a mech, actually. So this is actually good. There we go. That gets us a spare part, as you can see here. In this case, that is a rusty horn. Hmm. Yes. Quite. And we can throw down taunt with that if we wish. Might want to hold on to that. Okay, so I'm pretty convinced that this is an Avenge. Only one way to find out, really. The battle. The battle. It is an Avenge. There we go. What's it going to buff? It's going to buff up that, which is totally fine. Sweet. We could give that taunt, but don't really see the point. Don't need to give it taunt. He has no threats on the board, really. I'll hold on to this for better use later. Alright, well, we have a slightly better board than he does, but he still has this big card advantage. And really, this card that I've got is not exactly brilliant. Oh, okay. Here comes the long, slow paladin grind. How many cards has he drawn? It's at this point he's saying, well, maybe in 15 turns I end up fatiguing this guy. Matabomber. Hmm. I mean, I think we run that into that, and then we throw it on the Matabomber and hope for the best, don't we? Alright, Matabomber, I'm putting my trust in you, friend. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at it. The value. Delicious value. Can't argue with the Matter Bomber. Absolutely not. That was just lovely. Fantastic. Well, that gave me what I needed. For about five seconds. Oh, well. I mean, it was good. It did. It got value. Ah, Jeeves for me is pretty good. Jeeves, this is going to be a very odd situation because we're now going to be drawing cards heavily, as you probably noticed. So he gets three cards. I can now dump the Rusty Horn and hopefully everything else that I've got, and I will. There we go. I'm just going to dump the Rusty Horn because I want maximum card draw value from Jeeves. There we go. And we are going to let Jeeves draw us three cards here. And this, if Jeeves is left alive, we're going to end up in a crazy fatigue situation. So we could maybe play Jeeves to our advantage here. I've got a bunch of stuff. These are all good. So yeah, maybe, just maybe, Jeeves could be good here. I have a three-card edge on him when it comes to draw. He'll probably want to kill off his Jeeves, I imagine. He can't do it right now, though. He has too many cards in his hand as well. He's healing his Jeeves. He's keeping it. Is he going to dump his hand? If he does, that's amazing. Because, oh yeah, mind control tech time. Cool. Alright. This is all fun. So he'll gain some more cards. But now we can play around a little bit as well. Throw down the mind control tech. Which, ah, oh, lovely. Guess this is shielded mini bot. I do not complain about that one little bit. Probably the Senjin shield master here. Mm. But if I can get two cards out, then I can get two more from my deck. So if I play the Matter Bomber, then I obviously risk losing this stuff. So it's probably best that I kill a few of these off first. So why don't we just trade both of these into this first. Throw down the Bomber and then the Senjin. See what we get with that. Ooh, not bad, not bad. That could have been a lot worse. And then there we go. And then we can get two cards from Jeeves. Kel'Thuzad! Oh, potentially ideal, assuming I maintain most of this board here. Unfortunately, I can't play it because Ventrico is preventing me from doing so. So, we're gonna... I don't know, he may decide to get rid of Jeeves here because he's almost out of cards. If he throws his Jeeves and his thing into that, that'll actually be great because he'll exhaust most of his ability to fight my board. Oh, or he could do that. Alright. Let's see how much damage he's able to do to my board before I can play Kel'Thuzad and keep my stuff alive forever. Will he suicide his Jeeves? Looks like he will. Yep, it's gone. Alright, so he's going to get most of my stuff out of this. Oh, Kodo as well. He's going to wipe my board. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, I get to maintain that minion at least. But that's not great. That could have been a lot better. Oh, well. 
we will get some value out of this. There we go. So we get to kill that and then bring it back. And he doesn't have enough on the board to kill this. So Kel'Thuzad is, is still okay here. Would have been incredible if I'd maintained more of my board. But as it stands, it's still pretty good. And he cannot kill it this turn unless he has yet another spell. He's drawing hard as well. That's dangerous. Does he have another spell? Nope. He does not have the ability to kill Kel'Thuzad this turn. That is brilliant. Lovely. All right. Cool. Sengen Shield Master goes up. And he just gives up. <laughs> I mean, if Kel'Thuzad's on the board, I mean, what are you going to do? I maybe wouldn't have done that so easily, but I don't know what his hand is, so hey. Maybe he had a good reason. Okay, let's do one more game and then we'll wrap this one up. Alright. Savaganda, what you got? What we got? We actually have a nice opening hand here. Yeah. I got no objections to that. We're just going to hold on to it. Not at all. Probably coin Gilblin. Only the way to go. And then we've got our abusive sergeant as an option. Not that we'll probably need it. Is that a web spinner? Alright. Yep. That validates my decision. Get that on the board. What else you got? Well, hopefully it doesn't have that nasty sniper card. There's something you can get as a hunter now that allows you to target minions with your steady shot. It's pretty unpleasant. Mm. Half of me says hold on to this for if we get the Kobold Guardian, and then the other half of me says we're probably not getting the damn thing, so play it. Let's just get this on the board. We're going to have a sticky board, actually. Throw down Harvest Golem as well. It's a tough board to remove. Especially as a hunter. It's going to burn a deadly shot already, and he didn't get the Divine Shield minion. That has got to suck. Well, that's the sort of thing that would have been far more useful later on in the game. So, I'm fine with that. I have to play yet another mech out. Is what's going to happen. We're going to burn through all our mechs and then the Cobalt Guardian is going to pop up. Multi-shots. Again, terrible use of it because, I mean, he doesn't actually get anything out of it. Ooh, lovely. Okay, there's potential, but I think we're going to go with the Senjin here. Well, he's already burned a deadly shot and a multi-shot and accomplished very little with it, so... It's hard to object. If I was in his position, I'd be a little frustrated. Fen Creeper, alright. Not an easy thing to knock down, but we do have one of these, which might be handy here. Buff that up, and then probably trade. Play the Cog Hammer, we might not even have to trade at all. I'm going to play the Cog Hammer first, I want to know which is what's going to get the Divine Shield. That will, okay. Well, that was the thing I was going to buff, but now we can just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, we don't have to lose anything here, there's no need. We have a Divine Shield, so... We can just do that. Why not just maintain the entire board? What's the harm in that? That's good. Cool. Sweet. So, here's hoping for no TC-130 mental dislocator. Or some kind of board clear. If he had an explosive trap here, this would be not pleasant for me at all. Appears he does not. He does have that Tundra Rhino, which is going to run right into that, I would imagine, if he's got any sense. Yep, and he does. Okay, that's fair. We can at least just easily kill that with the cog hammer, so nothing to really object to. And we have a, a reasonably weak board, but I'm thinking we maybe just like hit him as hard as we can at this point and try and kill him before he gets anything threatening out. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're just going to go for him. Just we have a big board, and I know that Hunter board clear isn't very good, so we can maybe make use of that to kill him before he's able to respond. That's the hope at any rate. I could be completely off on that one. Of course, if I'm wrong and he's able to clear the board, I end up with a severe card disadvantage and I probably lose. So, let's see. Does he have the ability to stop me from killing him? 
deadly shot. Got very lucky with that one, certainly. One in five. I suppose that makes up for his failure earlier. Flare. All right, that's going to draw him a card. And a steady shot. Okay, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and he's, well, dead. Not really sure what the point of all that was, but hey. There we go, nice and easy. Nothing to complain about. Well, this deck isn't doing too badly, is it? Despite some questionable choices, it's... Not doing terribly at all. Alright, cool. Well, there you go. Five wins, zero losses. I'm sure someone will nitpick my play regardless. You can play Goblins vs. Gnomes in the arena right now. The full release of the expansion is on the 8th, and if you do log in in the pre-launch event, it, you get a free arena ticket. So you can play Arena for free one time with the new cards, and I'd recommend doing so. Just bear in mind that the cards you get as the reward will be a standard pack. So some people are going to maybe want to hold on to that Arena ticket for when Goblins vs. Gnomes officially launches, because then Arena packs will actually be Goblins vs. Gnomes packs. Just a bit of info for you. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I will see you next time.